Here on top of Uni, there's just layers and layers and layers of vines and trees and bushes growing on top of each other. And while the nature in Fiji is astounding... This is Ben. He's a banded iguana. It's not what takes our breath away. It's the people <laughs> and their amazing welcoming spirit. Join us as we board a ship to explore some of the remote northern islands where we join local villagers for church and parties. We're about to have some kava, which is a traditional Fijian drink. It's in a big bowl and they just made it. Plus, find out what Seamus is talking about here. I thought it was yesterday, but it's really today. <laughs> and what's going on here? In Spanning about 75,000 square miles of Pacific Ocean with over 800 islands and islets, Fiji's spectacular nature comes in its vast oceans and remote islands. The islands were formed millions of years ago by volcanic activity. The main international point of entry is on Viti Levu, the biggest island and home to about 75% of Fiji's population. In this episode, we are exploring Fiji's main island of Viti Levu and its less visited northern islands of Ovalau, Vanua Levu, and Tavayuni by way of a small ship cruise. But the cruise left the day before our arrival in Fiji. In true Fijian spirit, though, they've helped us arrange to meet them at their next port of call, which makes for an interesting travel day for us. We're flying Air Pacific, which is now Fiji Airways, and the bula starts right when we check in. We're riding a 747, which is a double-decker plane. The kids are really excited to explore a two-story plane. And the views when we come into Fiji are amazing, with bright green peaks peeking through fluffy clouds. Mashed potatoes are really puffy, like they come up and then they're all mixed. And then down in the valley you can see that there's just like a blanket of white gushy stuff. But that's not where our travel day ends. We took a 747 from LA to Nandi in Fiji and we landed and we ran to make a connection from Nandi to Suva on the same island in Fiji and now we're taking another hopper over to Lavuka. To a smaller plane and we're going to go to a small island on that and then we're going to get on a boat. In Suva we catch an even smaller plane to the island of Ovalau. And we're checking in for the flight to Lubuka. They have to weigh in the people also because it's such a small plane. Is it shotgun? Can you ask? You can ask. Okay. What if we were on this one for 10 hours? But lucky for us, it's only about a half hour hop. We're met at the airport for the last leg of our journey. Finally, the last leg of the journey. The taxi. Ah! Oh my god! Who was a spider like that? Yeah, my grandfather came from India, he's an indentured laborer. Maybe just they wave hands and they greet us. Eh? A lot of places nobody wants to greet you, nobody wants to know you, but here. To the town of Lavuka, where our ship is waiting. We started on April 2nd. We started on April 2nd, but since we crossed the international dateline, we're skipping a day. So April 3rd does not exist for me. So that was a long, not travel day. We are sailing with Captain Cook Cruises aboard the Reef Endeavor. The small size means a more intimate experience where you get to know people from around the world and the crew actually knows your name. And the ship has plenty of amenities for the whole family, including a sun deck with a pool. A spa, sauna, snorkel, and dive boats. 
The connecting rooms are perfect for families with younger kids. But one of the best parts of a Captain Cook cruise is their excursions. Today we're visiting a school in Lavuka, where they're having their traditional dance performance. Lavuka was the original European settlement in Fiji, which is apparent by the 1800s colonial architecture around town. It's old West town. Where vendors hawk everything from toys and household goods to fruits and vegetables. So we give the kids a bit of spending money. We always give them some local currency for markets at the beginning of a trip. Our kids make quick friends as they mix in with the group and watch the dancing. The kids' voices are amazing, and with their traditional dress and the lush green mountain backdrop, it's quite spectacular. After the show, our kids take a look around the school and play with their new friends, who accompany us back to the ship. Today we awake in the bay at Savu Savu on the island of Vanua Levu, which is the second biggest island in Fiji. Once known for its sandalwood, the island is now Fiji's sugar bowl, with lots of sugarcane plantations. On the way to our morning snorkel trip, we pass a pearl farm and watch as the divers pull in their catch. After lunch, Seamus hops in the pool with a dive instructor to complete a Discover Scuba course so he can dive with us later in the trip. Always be slow and easy, okay? Don't hyperventilate. Kids can get certified to scuba dive as early as 10 years old, making for a fantastic way to immerse in nature and adventure as a family. In the afternoon, we head inland on a hike through an amazing rainforest. But this isn't just any hike. We are going tubing on a river in the middle of nowhere. We ride in a truck full of inner tubes and then hike with our tubes, fording rivers and crossing fields until we reach a put-in place and float back down the river, stopping to jump off some cliffs along the way. After riding the rapids and a short hike back, that river's tiring. We have a traditional Fijian snack. This is a moo. What is it? A moo. Moo. We call it Fijian. Yes, it's moo. Fresh coconut! Yay! Thank you. Oh cool, he gave me a little scraper. And then we hike to a nearby hot springs to warm up in a volcanic bath, as Sabu Sabu is positioned on an extinct volcanic crater. When you do get in, just uh, feel free to paint your face and put it on your body because it's a lot of fun. Now there are places in there that you can sit down. We're going in the hot springs and it's oh. oh, it's hot! Oh. And the kids go crazy, painting mud all over their bodies and faces. Now you have to play with mud. You're giving the thumbs up. Today we explore the garden island of Fiji, Tavayuni. The green here is amazing and seemingly unending. After a short ride along a bumpy road where the kids keep themselves entertained with other kids they met on the ship, we arrive at the trailhead to Boma Falls. There are three falls here. The first one is a short hike from the visitor center. A light rain falls cooling us off along the hike. And the kids spot lots of wildlife along the way. There's a ton of toads around here, toads and frogs. There was a big one jumping up the wall. And then there's some small ones jumping around everywhere. The waterfall plummets almost 75 feet, thundering into a pool below surrounded by giant boulders and layers of green in all shades. So we've hiked up to Boma Falls here on Tabayuni. We went 
all the way behind the waterfall and we jumped off the rocks into the midst of the waterfall. Surrounded by giant boulders and layers and layers of green in all different shades. After our hike, we have lunch in a pavilion overlooking the river where the kids meet local kids. And then we head back to the boat for some afternoon fun. This afternoon, we're exploring below the waves in one of Fiji's best diving spots. Our maximum depth will be 12 meters only, okay? And follow the guide. Seamus is a bit nervous, but feeling prepared after taking his diving class yesterday. So we review some of the dive signs, are paired up with some dive buddies. Seamus will either be me or Manny, oh, okay. with Hayden, and you could buddy up with Nathan. To descend into an underwater paradise. Here you go. Hey, you go. This evening we've been invited by the locals of Naselisele village on Tabayuni to enjoy a traditional lovo feast and dance. When we arrive, we're informed of the traditional customs still observed here when entering a village in Fiji. Please keep the talking to a minimum. Just sit wherever you can. As I explained, to be seated is polite in the Fijian culture. To stand is impolite. So if you want to stand, please only right at the back of all others. And shows us the gift we bought for the village. The elders and the chief is the chief. Here today, they're gonna to sit at this uh, side of the community hall, and we're gonna hand over our sebu sebu. Okay. After a kava ceremony, which involves singing and chanting, we're about to have some kava, which is a traditional Fijian drink. It's in a big bowl, and they just made it. We are welcomed into the village. They pull the food from the lova, an oven in the ground, and it's time for dinner, which includes fish, cassava, and tropical fruits. After dinner, there is more kava and lots of dancing. The kids make good friends and lots of fond memories. It's Sunday on Tavayuni, which for much of the island means church service. But we're invited to attend, and what an honor it is. The Fijian voices are amazing and make for a powerful worship service. After church, we hop back on our bus and make our way through town with lots of shouts of bula along the way. <laughs> and head to one of the strangest attractions on the island. I thought it was yesterday, but it's really today. The 180th Meridian, or the International Dateline, runs straight through the island of Tavayuni. Well, I just time traveled into yesterday. I just time traveled into today. Allowing visitors to stand with one foot in today and one foot in tomorrow. And the boys have lots of fun jumping from present to future and back again. You came with that boat? Yes. And that's the jail cell. The cell? The cell. The cell. cell block. The guy in there is being interrogated for stealing a horse. This afternoon, we hop back to Vanua Levu to enjoy our last stop in the Northern Islands. A postcard perfect crescent of sand lined with palm trees hanging out over the water, whispering tide, where one of the crew members explains the importance of the palm tree to the Fijians. From the roots, we use it as herbal medicine. We use it for headaches and stomach aches. The ladies, they take the roots out, pound it, pound uh, the roots up, or if you step on a stonefish, you can uh, put, apply the juice on the wound as a first aid, right? It's a helmet. 
And he shows us how they use the leaves, making baskets. He made this boat out of palm leaves, and it can move. And he shows the kids how to husk a coconut. And the thin end, which is very, um, which is hard. So we'll work the soft end, which is thick and fibrous, onto the spike. And with one hand holding on, the other hand pushing down, we'll work our way around the soft bit. Thank you. Okay, I guess. Today we are heading back to Viti Levu, through the channel to its north, and the second officer has invited the kids onto the bridge to learn more about how the ship works. What does the second officer do? I'm in charge of all navigation. In medical supplies. He shows them how the navigation works on a ship like this. So the radar sends out signals, and anything the signal bounces off comes back as a target on the screen. All the green colors, all the green colors is exposed during low tide. The white bit is deep enough, it doesn't get exposed. We've got two big sets of radar at the bottom of the ship at the back, and that steers the ship. So as soon as you move the wheel, the radar moves. So if I move this, that one move? Uh, yes. Yeah, we're going this way. We're going to this island, put this right up there. How do you become such an officer on the ship? You attend a maritime college for about three years, and then if you uh, graduate, then uh, you go and do a set of oral exams with the government, and then if you pass that, then the government gives you a license. On this, our last evening on board, the crew hosts a kava ceremony for us with lots of dancing and fun. This morning, we're heading to the south side of Viti Levu to spend a few days relaxing and exploring Fiji's main island. We chose to stay at Outrigger Fiji Beach Resort near the town of Sinkatoa. Outrigger Fiji is a nearby drive from the International Airport, and it has plenty of fun in the sun with Kola Park directly behind it and Sinkatogo River Tours offering exciting tours of villages up the river. We're greeted with enthusiasm at the resort. Hula. Hula! <laughs> And the lush vegetation and open palapas for dining and activities is perfect for a little family relaxation time. The kids have a blast in the expansive tropical pool. But we find out Nathan's ear has been bothering him since his last scuba dive on the ship. But lucky for us, there is an on-premise doctor here who can see us right away. And after looking in his ear, she has good news and bad news. It's good, yeah. What he's done is bulging eardrum it is. It is. The outer is all right. Good news is it's not too bad and she can start him on medication right away. Bad news is he can't get it wet for a while. He needs three drops oh. in one day Stop. for five it's days. in, Mom. But there's lots of other kids' activities on premise to keep them occupied, as well as adventure and cultural immersion excursions for older kids. So after a little pool time, we decide to stroll across the road to Kula Eco Park. Founded in 1997, the park aims to educate locals and tourists about Fiji's wildlife and supports conservation efforts through breeding and research. These ones here are called banded iguanas. See, boys have these blue bands on them. Females are plain green. Have a hold. That's Ben. Ben's girlfriend's name's Gwen. They're seven years old and they only eat leaves and fruits. This is Ben. He's a what? He's a banded iguana. Fiji's banded iguanas grow to about two feet long. They feed on fruit and plants and spend most of their lives high up in the trees. They like to be up high, so usually starts climbing on the camera. Where they use their long <laughs> toes and sharp claws to race along tree branches. Why is his tail so long? The tail is for its naughty kids. They whip their kids. Just joking. Um, they use their tail to uh, balance themselves. If they're up on trees and they flip over, they're falling over, they flip their tails to the opposite side. This is Wendy. Wendy is our Pacific boa constrictor. She's non-venomous, just a baby, and she'll be growing to about three meters fully grown. Oh, hello. Wendy says, Hello, girls. Welcome to the park. I think Curly. This is a boy named Curly. 
The Pacific boa constrictor grows to about five feet long. It feeds on little animals, including birds and lizards, by wrapping its body around the prey. You can totally feel it. I know, you can totally feel yeah. it contracting and uncontracting. That's so weird. It feels like he's giving me a massage because he's totally squirming on my neck. Can you see light? Oh, that is scary. Yeah. What is this? You can see light through his ears. Don't try this at home, kids. Farther back in the park, we follow wooden paths through lush jungle, past various animal enclosures. This is so cool. There's so many animals in the zoo. I thought it was just the snakes and the lizards. Where we meet all sorts of animals. It's a bat. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, oh, he's right there, he's right there. It climbs like a monkey, the head of a lemur with the, you know, body of a bat. You gonna bite me when it catches up to it? I'm kinda scared. No, I was just sniffing it. <laughs> After exploring Fiji's nature, it's time to immerse in the culture, and Outrigger offers the perfect way to do that at their fire walking ceremony. A feat, <laughs> excuse the pun, that is sure to impress the boys. According to legend, a giant eel gave warriors on Becca Island the ability to walk on fire in exchange for his release. There is much tradition and taboo involved in the walk. Before they actually cross the burning hot coals, they chant. Does it hurt? No. But uh, he didn't have feel anything because it's a gift, so we got all the power. How do you just say, I'm gonna step in the fire. How do you do that? It's uh, in your mind. Everything is in your mind. All that fire walking, or watching fire walking, built up the boys' appetite, and we head to an open pavilion to dine all fresca in the beautiful tropical evening. Fried Fiji bugs in light tempura batter, tossed in black pepper sauce with curry leaves and garden salad. Today, we're heading to Singatoka to ride the river and visit a local village. But first, we head into the town's markets for a look. Our first stop is at the pharmacy to pick up medication for Nathan's ear. iPads for only 65 cents. Literally, iPads. That's the Fever. Yeah, Two after lunch And then it's into the markets. How are you? What is that? This whole plate of, I think, peppers, what is Okra? The whole plate of okra is only 50 cents. It smells good. Java root. We pound it. It gets pounded. I like it. <laughs> Browsing for souvenirs and getting to know the locals. And they notice something unique about the vendors here. The Bula spirit flows right through into their business outlook. I got this, I bought this, I got this for free, and I got this for free. Because as a present, as a present you, when you go up to the stand and you start looking at it, they come over and they give you like two things as a present. Five, ten, twenty. She's giving me change. Yeah, but five. I got that. Make sure I'm very careful. That's two dollars. That's a dollar. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely holiday, darling. Oh, thank you. You have done my first sale of that day. How old is it? Twelve. Oh, he, she's nine. Oh, like my other son. Yeah. After the markets, Seamus and Jeremy head upstream in a fast boat, while Nathan and I head back to the hotel to rest his ear. This is Kava. It's wrapped in this so we can give it to the chief. At Sinkatoka River Tours, we take a speedboat up the river into the rural area, where the guide explains how they fish. When they put that in the water, it'll make a special noise that the fish can come over. And grow food. We grow vegetables like Chinese cabbage, English cabbage, uh, watermelon, okra, beans, 
the Sinatoka Valley is also known as the Salad Bowl of Fiji. Before we enter the village, a chief is elected from our group, and the winner is the oldest man here. Are you the chief? I am. And the cameraman? <laughs> chief and cameraman. Which is me. Chief Kamit. Our guide explains that in Fiji, the Bula spirit goes beyond just niceties. It's a manner of living. We look after one another, we care for one another. See this house here? If they don't have any sugar, they'll go and borrow some sugar from that house over there. If one of them goes there, the house is closed. It is closed, but not locked. Spend another a month in the village. Then you will know what life is. If you don't have relaxation back home, come to the village. I'm in a village and we're going to see a baby pig. And then it's time to take over my chiefly duties. So after I present this to them, one of them will receive it on behalf of the village. After that, they'll present to us kava in powdered form mixed with water. And the festivities start with singing and a kava ceremony, followed by a traditional lunch. How you eat? So do you use your hands? Cassava. This tastes like potatoes. It's called cassava. As the afternoon fades on our last day in Fiji, our two explorers return from the river, and we have one final surprise in store for the kids. They've been asked to join in a Fijian torch lighting ceremony. What started as a functional process has become a ritual much loved by visitors to Fiji, and Outrigger does it in style. We don't rush, we go slow. Yes. We go slow, naked and shameless. Shameless from wrestling. and help them get into traditional Fijian dress and war paint. And then they hand them torches, hoping they won't burn anything, and run around the resort, lighting all the evening torches. Both hands, make sure I don't drop it, otherwise you will burn my Fijian hair. Over there. I feel like I'm carrying the Olympic torch. And after the job is done, and I watch the boys running around the beach with their new friends in their traditional grass skirts, I think how lucky we are to explore such a spectacular land and immerse in such an amazing, tradition-rich culture. I hope the spirit of Bula stays with us for a long, long time and that we can share it as we explore the rest of the world. Travel with the kids.